Alexis Kozlowski. I'm absolutely delighted to be a part of the Series Food Film Festival with showing my film, Let Them Eat Cake. I've been making movies uh, for many, many years. And uh, the most recent of them is called The Parking Lot of Dreams, which is a hybrid between pandemic poetry and uh, walking around a deserted parking lot um, and making photocollages like what you see in the background. So that, that's that's why I have this background up since I knew you're gonna ask me a little bit about, you know, who, who is Alexis Kozlowski? That's who I am. <laughs> so Jillian, thank you very much for being there. Amazing. Um, what inspired you to make this film? Well, I was screening uh, my prior global documentary called Women Behind the Camera at the Dhaka International Film Festival in Dhaka, Bangladesh which is a city uh, with a population just as large as that of New York City, but where millions of people are uh, suffering from extreme poverty and hunger. And Sanjay Ghosh, who's a filmmaker from India, and I started talking at the festival about how could we bring the situation to the world's attention. So we started this film, uh, Let Them Eat Cake, during the food crisis of 2008 in Dhaka, Bangladesh, when the price of the country's basic staple, which is rice, it was so inflated that even middle-class people were having a hard time eating three basic meals a day. And, and the quality of the rice that the poor could afford to eat was something that ordinarily would have been fed only to cattle. And at that time in comparison, the US, my country, had just been overtaken by a cupcake craze. By the time we finished the film in uh, 2014, people had been rethinking sugar and obesity, and one in six people in the U.S. were struggling with hunger, and there were, I, I, I think I looked it up before this interview, one, one, uh, 842 million people in the world didn't have enough to eat, and for each year of the film, over five million children under five died of, of uh, poor nutrition, so that was a big influence, uh, and then on a personal level, I remember when my mother uh, forcing me to eat tasteless, previously frozen peas uh, from the supermarket as a kid. And I would swallow them one by one like bitter medicine. And they were like pills. And, and she, would, she would be telling me and, and while I'd be swallowing them, think of the starving children in India. And, and that stayed with me, especially in 2001 when I went to Mumbai, India to film my first global documentary and I found myself surrounded by beggars. And I also remember being a fat kid gorging on pink and white hostess snowballs. My, and my mother compensated for the poverty and neglect of her own childhood by giving us, her children of privilege, two or three pieces of candy, cookies, pies, cakes every day. There were special birthday cakes. There were gingerbread decorating parties at Christmas. Uh, and there were pilgrimages from suburban New York to Brooklyn for crumb cakes from the original Epiger's Bakery. And then I also remember uh, being a 20-something 20, 20 poet and wanting to put my head in the oven because I was so influenced by Sylvia Plath's poetry and I could relate to, to her depression and making a film about the perils and pleasures of pastries, I, I think is probably a better use of an, of an oven in one's life. Um, so. Um... I, my next question is, what was your biggest challenge while making uh, Let Them Eat Cake? Please excuse the pun, but paying for this production wasn't a piece of cake. It wasn't a piece of cake financially or ethically. And this is what I mean by that. I mean, I have to answer it with a question. I mean, how many children would our overall production and post-production budget have fed? Is it ethical to spend more than $100,000 on a film about hunger instead of feeding people who are starving? And, you know, if we really get specific about it, how many school children could have had a healthy lunch in the US public schools instead? Or how many elderly and unemployed on Native American reservations could have had a decent dinner? Or how many farmers could have been saved from bankruptcy and suicide in Andhra Pradesh, India? When we started pre-production, the World Bank had estimated that there were 
I had to look back to, to, to find these numbers, but they, the World Bank had estimated that there were uh, 1,345 million poor people in developing countries who were living on a on a dollar twenty five dollar and twenty five cents a day or less. So you do the math. Apparently, the numbers of people living in extreme poverty went down significantly uh, since nineteen ninety. If we're looking at World Bank statistics, but since two thousand sixteen, I believe those numbers have been rising again, and that makes me think that our film can still be helpful in raising awareness if we can face the challenges of distribution. Uh, do you want another challenge? Um, yeah, what, what's another challenge if you have one? Another one was how to include the five major world religions in our film. Um, and we wanted to show what made each culture that makes pastries for special holidays, you know, like Christmas cookies or uh, Rosh Hashanah, special kind of sweet challah, what makes each culture special and unique and how that tied into pastry making. But at the same time, we wanted to emphasize the humanity that different cultures have in common. So how did we do that? We did that by, uh, first of all, filming an interview with Shodo Harada Roshi, who is a Zen Buddhist abbot in Okayama. And he talked about the Japanese tea ceremony, which includes a special pastry, but also about the world hunger crisis. And we conducted interviews with Maria Carmen Lara while she was making mortitos and caballitos for the Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico. And we talked to Isabel Cohen while baking Passover cookies um, and a special sweet bread for the Jewish New Year in Paris. And they, we filmed a Hindu temple uh, that J.P. Peda Rama Good visited in Andhra Pradesh. Um, and he discussed the, uh, and, and that's where he discussed the problems faced by sugarcane farmers. And we also filmed in the Lebanese pastry shop, uh, Mustafa in L London, and we included Sufi music. We want our film to be for everyone. So we worked hard at, at that in terms of the, the sounds and the visuals of the people that we chose to talk to. What was your experience uh, in the subject you set out to tackle in your movie before production? Before production, if we go way back, I've been making documentaries since 1971, uh, which is when I wrote and directed a film called End of the Art World, which is currently being restored through a National Film Preservation Award. And each time I've made a film, I've learned about the subject matter in the process of making the film. So in the case of my first film, I learned about the New York art world by filming Andy Warhol, and Bob Rauschenberg and Jasper Jones, et cetera. In the case of Let Them Eat Cake, although I'd been a passionate consumer of pastries and I'd been to over a dozen countries, I didn't know the extent of hunger worldwide. I didn't know how it tied into environmental issues. And so making the film was a, an experience of exploration and soul searching. My, my main experience before we made uh, Let Them Eat Cake was in the method of making a global documentary. I, I had already learned the importance of listening to the people in the countries where we were filming instead of acting like an entitled auteur. Uh, and this is something that I had already learned making Women Beyond the Camera, which was filmed in a dozen countries on every continent except Antarctica over several years. And I was fortunate to have two co-producers this time uh, Sanjoy Ghosh from India and Dr. Hamadou Suma from Guinea, France and the US, uh, who, and they were friends with some of the most talented directors from their countries. Ajit Nag, who unit directed the uh, filming of the sugarcane workers in Andhra Pradesh, and Musa Kemoko Diakite, who unit directed the filming of the children working as cocoa plantation workers in Guinea, West Africa. Uh, we also worked with uh, uh, with uh, Rosa Carillo, who had tremendous experience regarding the history of the Day of the Dead in Mexico, and Christopher Garumbolo, who is a Nicaragua Apache filmmaker uh, who had personal experience of Native American life in New Mexico. Uh, if, if I had relied on my own experiences uh, in the subject at hand, I think the film would not have had been as it wouldn't have been as rich a collaborative effort and. 
probably would have reeked of misconceptions and bias. That's really amazing because I feel as though you don't hear that too often today. I think a lot of people are kind of fighting for uh for what you just did with that film, like having such a global and diverse uh, crew uh, to speak on the different experiences of different people around the world um, to avoid what you just said. I mean, that, that's really amazing. Well, I live in LA in the shadow of Hollywood, but I don't aspire to be James Cameron. It's a different <laughs> kind of filmmaking. It totally requires am. a different kind of relationship with the people on the other side of the camera. Okay, so the, my next question is, what impact are you hoping to have with this film? Well, the film itself um, has already screened in many countries, including uh, Turkey and India and Mexico, Canada, Switzerland, and it won several awards, including Best Documentary Feature at the Paris Independent Film Festival and Best Editing at the Sole Luna Festival in Italy. But when the film was completed, that was 2014. And it was perhaps a little ahead of its time then. I mean, global warming, farmer suicide, drought, flooding, and food in inequity have all become major topics in addition to the pastry chef craze uh, that I guess you could say it's exemplified in the Great British Bake Off and other popular programs on TV. Uh, I, I hope that by by screening uh, our film, Let Them Eat Cake, um, in 2022, uh, that it will reach more people and will help them connect the dots so that more and more people will do what they can to reverse global warming, food insecurity, and honor their cultural traditions through pastry making at the same time, if possible, when possible. And my last question is, what other projects are in store? Well, currently I'm working on a children's animated feature with co-screenwriter Shamin Akhtar, who is a writer director in Dhaka, Bangladesh, that addresses environmental issues and democracy during the Bangladesh Liberation War. And our story is told from the eyes of a Bengal tiger named Tuki, who wants to save her family and her forest. Tuki the Tiger is designed by Tiger Nazir, who is one of Bangladesh's top folk artists and we expect it to be a high quality production that teaches children about the importance of conservation and democracy worldwide. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I absolutely loved your film. Thank you very much for your, your questions. And it was so nice to meet you, even if it's in Zoom instead of person for now. <laughs>